What we have here is the Linear Tube Audio Z10 Stereo Integrated Amplifier. It's a tube amp with, uh, it is an output transformerless design uh, done by David Burning, who's kind of known for that, except David Burning's own output transformer amplifiers are a lot more expensive than this one. This one, by the way, is $4,900. Um, it's the, the chassis is made by Fern and Roby in um, Virginia, and Linear Tube Audio it does everything else in Maryland. Uh, so let's see, it's got four EL84 output tubes. It puts out 10 watts into 8 ohms, um, 12 watts into 4 ohms. But it's also a hell of a headphone amplifier. That's why I have those. Uh, Susvera headphones sitting on top of it. Now the Susveras are yeah, right up there with the very, very best headphones in the world. Certainly the best I've heard, and I've heard most. And the headphone is more expensive than this integrated amp. It's $6,000, and it's really a bear to drive. So that's why I was playing it just before I made this video. And it is a scary good combination with these headphones. I mean, it's so hyper transparent but also the mid-range is uh, to die for it's just stunningly beautiful stunningly you know transparent can sound I don't like that word sometimes because it's too it implies some analytical quality but that is not something I would apply to uh, to this headphone amp or driving speakers now considering it's low power I used my Klipsch Forte 3 speakers which are 99 dB sensitivity but you know not everybody has clipches so I also used a very low sensitivity speaker I also used um, Kef LS 50s which I think are 85 or 86 dB sensitivity so huge difference in sensitivity so yeah I can tell you it's uh, the amp is happier with the big clipches but it's not really good with the LS 50s especially in the near field where power demands are less because you're you know right on top I was listening from mm, maybe four feet away from the speakers um, it's a lovely lovely amp it's really beautifully made uh, the tubes don't run so hot that this one doesn't get burning hot at that well get the, get it burning burning hot no anyway David burning designed it um, those buttons on the front of the chassis by the way are brass it's got a really nice tactile feel. The volume control is a stepped attenuator, well, electronically resistor ladder type, I think, I think. Uh, check my review on CNET to get all these kind of tech de details um, right down <laughs> correctly. Let's just put it that way. And I will link to the review directly below this video. Um, but the sound with... Um, the Klipsch's was just so, well, if you had any doubt that you could listen to a horn speaker without hearing any horn colorations, you listen to these, this amp with that speaker, because it's just so open, so beautiful, so spacious, so mid-range is gorgeous. Now the top is so clear, the treble is so clear that it can it can strike you as being bright. I'm not sure that it is. It's just that you just hear details in the top end that you don't hear with most other amps. So maybe I'm being distracted by to the top end, the cymbals, percussion instruments, horns. I just hear this air, this open quality. Um, yeah, but it is probably a tiny bit bright. And that combined with that the deep bass is not is not it's not, I wouldn't say it's not there, it's just not brawny. It's not going to kick you in the gut kind of deep bass. It doesn't do that, but you know, 10 watts isn't going to do that in any case. But it's also true with headphones. The headphones bass is super clear, high, high resolution bass coming out of headphones, but again, not punchy, not like, it's lacking. It's lacking in that, in that area, but there's more to life than deep bass, that's for sure. And um, it's very, uh, oh, when I was listening to Harry Belafonte at Carnegie Hall, 
I, re I believe it was recorded in 1959. The sense of hearing this great sit, uh, singer, but in this huge space with this great acoustic, you just feel the air in Carnegie Hall 60 years ago. I mean, 60? Yeah, 60 years ago. That's, that's, whew, that's incredible. Um, I love it. Now, it, the, it, it's sitting on top right now of a first watt F7, which to tell you the truth, I didn't compare it to, but I compared it to a first watt J2, uh, which is similar power and um, a little less expensive. I did tell you how much the, this costs, right? The uh, Z10, it's $4,900. The J2 first watt is, um, I think $4,000, but that's strictly a power amp. But the J2 um, has more meat on the bones. It's a richer, it, well, ironically, it's more tube sounding than this tube amplifier. Um, so there you go. Um, but I was, oh, I was also listening to some Yola Tango. What is that album called? Summer Fun, Summer something or other. And uh, there's so, so much texture and density to the sound of that recording. And the Z10 just revels in bringing that up, letting you go deep into it. You just you can wander around in, in, inside a recording with this amplifier. So, it, you know, integrated amps are, are, uh, of all price ranges are pretty common, but getting one, even a $4,000 one with truly a world-class headphone amplifier, uh, that's, that's kind of rare. I can't think of another integrated amp that could, pe that could compete with this one on headphones. So I sort of see this amp as ideal for someone who's pretty serious about headphones and speakers. It's doing double duty at a very high standard. I think we're good. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show you've been watching. Uh, come back often. I have close to 600 uh, videos on this channel. There's music reviews, there's equipment reviews, there's speaker uh, reviews, there's uh, the ever popular audiophiliac of the day where other people get to say their piece. It's not always just me. Check out those playlists. Definitely, there's playlists for all those things. They're listed right near the top of the page, the playlists are. And, um, you know, oh, and check out the, oh, check out, subscribe to this YouTube channel if, you, if you'd like. I'd, I'd be very pleased if you did. And I think we're done. So my name again is Steve Guttenberg. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.